You're welcome to Hope Adventist News right from the studios of Hope Channel Ghana, 23 Julius Nere Street, Osu, Accra. And my name is Nana Kusiabwachi. I bring you this week's inspiring updates and key stories from our community and around the world. Here are the top stories. Prophecy Unveiled, National Women's Ministry Satellite Campaign concludes our Future Foretold Bible Lecture Series with deep spiritual impact. New Life Seventh-day Adventist Church reaches out to community through music on first Sabbath of October, dedicating ceremonial groups to the Lord. Nectarine Health, Nectarine Souls, How Healthy Eating Led to Christ. This and other story will be coming your way right after the break. Welcome back now to our very first story. The Seventh-day Adventist Church, in collaboration with the Columbia Union Conference of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, has successfully concluded our Future Foretold Bible Lecture Series held from October 2nd to the 12th, 2024 at the Cape Coast Central Seventh-day Adventist Church in the Central Region. This highly anticipated event, part of the National Women's Ministry Satellite Campaign, attracted participants nationwide. The seminar featured a morning lecture series aimed at building a solid foundation for understanding Bible prophecy. The sessions explored key topics such as church planting stories, an evangelism opportunity, domestic violence in the faith-based community, trauma and the faith-based community, preparing them for the more detailed evening sessions. Sister Celestine, the keynote speaker, emphasized the importance of teaching like the best book ever within. The word became flesh and the family worship. This insight allowed attendees to grab the relevance of biblical teachings in today's society. The practical nature of this lesson equipped participants with tools for daily spiritual growth. A highlight of the series was the baptism of several individuals, symbolizing the transformative impact of the teachings. This baptism represented a public declaration of faith and a commitment to live accordingly to the prophetic message shared during the campaign, marking a significant spiritual milestone for many. The campaign, led by the National Women's Ministries, highlighted the important role of women in spiritual leadership and community engagement. Through this initiative, the ministries empowered women and families to strengthen their faith whilst fostering a sense of community and spiritual growth among participants. The Our Future Foretold Bible Lecture Series had proven to be an enlightening journey into prophecy and a transformative experience for many across Ghana. With lives touched and hearts changed, the event stood as a beacon of hope and spiritual guidance in uncertain times. During an interview with the treasurer of the Colombian Union, Pastor Emmanuel Asiedu, and some Indian surgeons who participated in Ghana's free cataract surgery initiative shared their insight and experience. They expressed their commitment to providing quality eye care and were deeply moved by their work impact on restoring sight to those in need. I would like to praise the Lord for bringing us here to Cape Coast. We came from Columbia Union. And in Columbia Union, we believe in God's commission given to us to come to the whole world. And so we came with evangelists and we also came with a medical team. In 2018, I went to India and I saw Dr. Jacob, the main surgeon. And at that time, he was operating over 6,000 patients, those who were blind. And when I went there and I saw that they were doing over 400 eye surgeries in a day, and so I decided that I would invite him and the team to come to Ghana so that they will be able to help cure my brothers and my sisters in Ghana who had eye issues. Hi, uh, we are from India. This is, uh, the medical professionals came all the way from India and we collaborate with uh, the Columbian Conference and the healthcare professionals from across Ghana, primarily the Adventist hospitals, and we're able to give a uh, precious gift of sight to more than a thousand patients. Uh, we collaborate with the Adventist healthcare professionals, doctors and nurses, and we are so glad that we were able to help 
these many patients who now are able to see and say, I was once blind, but now I see. Praise the Lord. Amen. We praise God for this ministry, and we believe that God will bless Ghana and the, the entire union in making sure many people are able to get the spiritual side, not just the physical side, but spiritual side. A report by Leticia Pia. In a related story, the Women's Ministries Department of the Midwest Ghana Conference successfully hosted its biannual Women and Young Women Ministries Congress from October 10th to the 13th, 2024 at the University of Energy and Natural Resources, Sunyani. The event, which brought together over 500 participants, served as a platform for spiritual revival and also empowerment, particularly in line with the church's I Will Go Mission initiative. <laughs> formation I will go provided opportunities for women to deepen their faith, share testimonies and strengthen their commitment to the Adventist mission. Attendees participated in a series of workshops, devotional sessions and prayer meetings designed to enhance their spiritual journey and leadership within the church. During the Sabbath sermon, Pastor Maxwell Obobwatiwa, President of the Midwest Ghana Conference, delivered a powerful message emphasizing the sacredness of the Sabbath. Mrs. Hannah A.J., the Women's Ministry Director of the Conference, underscored the importance of the Congress in equipping women spiritually for the work of the Church. She stressed that the biannual gathering is a vital opportunity for women to be renewed in their spiritual lives and to strengthen their resolve to resist the challenges and temptations of the modern world. Uh, Midwest Ghana Conference. You made the idea in her, it didn't that so a women's retreat. That is conference meaning a women's ministries retreat for the year 2024. If you mean you send a near woman, so if you mean you need your bar, I was soon a junior whole energy media air cosso. But I did you mean you say I was a brano brano and ma ya ya to me say a beck or a dinner me assemble call. I was a term, a brabom, cassem, a doyem, a young cofem, a warium, a batitiemono, ye shea, na brano brano, ye treachery, ye home, ye treachery, ye home, and yema, said ye bear shin ye bear num, yem fast second we ye, and caught a fool, and yes, a kind of bear num. Now you try it to me a train ye, nunty and ye babishia. The sun say ye nim say, or bonny forno, and when ye mob be brought to a good we are saying, now da. Or the air high, a nunti, the beer, the beer, a yet seen your man in some for no. But I am say, say, I may, I want yam fire, I may rather not see a metransia, and shall not you cry in po. You rare feet, and I free and some testimonies from several participants reflected the profound impact the Congress had on their spiritual lives. Many reported a renewed sense of purpose and a deeper commitment to the Adventist mission, pledging to carry the I Will Go message into their homes, churches, and communities. I she na ye nam anti e ma manage pa na de e ma manage pa so ene se na kan ma ye ni chefa e wo kristo mu ye kan ma e she fese no ye kan ma e she na so ma mi si no ma ma ye so ya se bi ya pega ye aye ti mi ka bibia wo kristo mu aye mo ye ho abomfia uh. The event ended with a prayer session with many women vowing to implement what they had learned, making a collective commitment to uphold Adventist values and be agent of change in their spheres of influence. The Women's Ministries Congress continues to be a pivotal event in the life of the church, shaping women into leaders and active participants in the mission to spread the gospel and foster spiritual growth within the families and communities. A report by Benjamin Jamara Tsunyane. Let's go for a quick break. We'll be back with the rest story.
Welcome back. You remind us that this news is brought to you by Angels of Hope. Moving on, the new Life Saint Day Adventist Church in the Sunyani South District marked the first Sabbath of October with a distinctive outreach program, blending music, prayer, and evangelism to connect with the Bakunyaba community led by the Holy Family Singing Group. Church members to the streets and homes of the local community sharing the gospel through Adventist hymns, offering prayers of blessings, and distributing spiritual literatures. <laughs> The outreach effort was part of the church's broader mission to engage the community and spread the message of hope in Christ, as the harmonious voices of the Holy Family singing group echoed through the neighborhood, many residents paused from their daily activities to listen, creating a warm and receptive atmosphere. Church members interacted with individuals and families, offering encouragement and spiritual support, while the religious literature distributed focused on key Adventist beliefs and the importance of a personal relationship with God. In an interview with Hope Adventist News, Elder Samuel Tekpo, leader and founder of the Holy Family Singing Group, shared the vision behind this initiative. He revealed that the outreach program is set to become a regular monthly activity with the goal of involving the entire church in using music and prayer as tools for reaching souls in the community. The church leadership echoed Elder Temple's sentiments, emphasizing the importance of personal outreach as part of the church's mission. Pastor Imanoki Owusu, the church pastor, highlighted the significance of taking the gospel beyond the walls of the church and into the streets where people live and work. He commended the Holy Family Singing Group for their dedication and urged the entire congregation to participate in future outreach programs, stressing the need for every member to play a role in fulfilling the Great Commission. As the first Sabbath outreach concluded, Plans were already underway for the next month activity, with the hope that even more members of the New Life Church will join in the ongoing evangelistic effort. The initiative is expected to grow, incorporating additional elements such as Bible studies and health screenings in future programs to meet both the spiritual and physical needs of the community. A report by Benjamin Jamura, Midwest Ghana Conference, Sunyane. Now to our feature story for this week, Christ's method of ministry is being demonstrated throughout the North American division. Let's take a look at how adopting healthy eating habits helped bring a soul to Christ. Chinu would have never guessed that a conversation about organic tomatoes would lead him and his family to the Adventist faith. He met a Seventh-day Adventist at his job and they often ate lunch together. 
His new friend noticed that every time they went out to eat, Chinu threw his tomatoes to the side. So he began talking to him about the value of nutrition and health. I just lost my best friend, was just in a really tough place. Health-wise, I was just in a terrible condition. And that's when I had met one of my very good friends today, and he shared with me the health message. It wasn't long before Chinu was studying about health and the Sabbath. His family began keeping the Sabbath by going on walks and having worship in nature. They did this every week. Hickory, North Carolina was once a textile town that developed a large immigrant community who came to work. One of the largest groups was the Hmong from Southeast Asia. When manufacturing jobs moved overseas, a large number of workers left Hickory. However, the Hmong population stayed. The Hickory Korean Adventist Church's numbers had dwindled. The few members left noticed their Hmong neighbors and decided to plant a church. Their goal was to eventually give their space to a future Hmong congregation. As I was in between jobs, I was doing interpreting on the side. I received a phone call one day from a pastor at the Korean SDA church in Hickory asking for a Hmong interpreter to teach them how to speak Hmong. So Chinu's family attended an Adventist church for the first time. It just felt like a breath of fresh air. Uh, it just felt like just this immense pressure just taken off of, it was like my spirit felt so free that first time that we were able to worship. Even just the Korean church members that were there, their character, it actually reflected Christ because they were so friendly and so kind and welcoming that we just felt like we belonged there. Um, and it just felt like it was, it was right. It was where our family needed to be. The family had always been active members of another church. They continued to attend both churches for a while. Eventually, Chinu and Gina were overwhelmed. We had a lot of connection, a lot of friends, and we were leaders of a small group, and we didn't want to just leave them behind. Chinu and Gina earnestly asked God to reveal where they should be. First thing we said was, the, if, if anyone ever asks us to choose between one or the other, um, we know, which decision we know we where we need to be. The next day, their former pastor asked them to hurry up and come back full time to the church. And we kind of just looked at each other and said, thank you, God, for the answer. Yes. <laughs> the Korean elders believe God is calling them to help plant a Hmong congregation, and they are committed to supporting in any way possible. Church elder Daniel Kim, a recently retired electrical engineer, and his wife Myung have moved away to Georgia to care for her parents but they drive six to seven hours round trip every Sabbath to support the Hmong church plant. We feel like we're part of something important. So because of that, sense of mission that we have, the vision that we have, the goal that we have. So because of that, we don't feel like, you know, it's a long drive or hard drive. We were just drawn in by their Christ-like character from the very beginning, their friendliness, their willingness to help, and really their, their, their desire, their selflessness, and their desire to help uh, the Hmong community. And I think for us, that passion is very contagious. And for us, you know, being Hmong, of course, it, there's a, just a big burden, a big responsibility we feel to share the good news with those around us that haven't heard the message. All of Chinu and Gina's kids play a role in the church. From helping teach the children's Sabbath school to running the audiovisual system, everyone is involved. Even Cadence, the youngest, turns the lights off to watch Mission Spotlights and back on afterward. There is still much to do for this Hmong church plant in Hickory. We invite you to pray as the work continues. One thing to pray is really for their, to really come to know who God is, who a loving God and a merciful God, and God that is willing to heal, or not only physically, but spiritually. Thank you for supporting Mission and planting churches around the world. The Arctic is a challenging place to live. The winter brings well below freezing temperatures, so cold that you can experience frostbite in as quickly as five minutes. The Inupiat people of Northern Alaska have lived off this land for centuries. At the northernmost city in the United States, Utkiatvik rests on the shores of the Arctic Ocean. Its landscape is dominated by vast expanses of tundra and ice. The mayor of Utkiatvik describes some common misconceptions of life in the Arctic. Well, there's the igloo thing. Everyone thinks we're in igloos or not. <laughs> or penguins, that's Antarctica. Despite the beauty of wildlife and displays of the northern lights, there is one very unique challenge, the darkness. For two months in the winter, the sun never rises. We're definitely uh, dark 
in the winter months, you feel isolated, even more isolated during that time, and you start to go through this sadness um, just before the light hits. There unfortunately is a mental health crisis here in Yavik. If you look at the Alaska's rate, suicide rate, compared to the national rate, we're three times higher uh, than the national rate. And when you get up to the northern region, you're double that number. And so that's why it's been our church's mission to really go out and be able to share the hope that we have in Jesus Christ, but also raise awareness. Let us in every way be able to bring a soul or win a soul to Christ. That's how we wrap up today's news. Stay with us for a recap of the top stories. Prophecy Unveiled National Women's Ministry Satellite Campaign concludes our future foretold Bible lecture series with deep spiritual impact. New Life Same Day Adventist Church reaches out to community through music on first Sabbath of October. Nurturing health, nurturing souls, how healthy eating led to Christ. Hope Adventist News is brought to you by Angels of Hope. I will go. You can equally go by being part of the Angels of Hope Club in spreading the word of God. All you need is just dial star 928 star 32 star 104 hash on your phone and follow the prompt. You can equally send your donations to Hope Channel Momo account number 024919383. You can watch Hope Adventist News and all other uplifting programs on our social media handles. On YouTube is Hope Channel Ghana and Facebook is Hope TV Ghana. Remember, you can also reach us on our WhatsApp line 0559-680066 or our email address hopetvghana at gmail.com. Thanks for joining us as we begin a new week. Remember, with Jesus in the boat, there's no need to fear the storm. My name is Nana Kusio and have a good night.